lucky ones that made it through. So there's big lines out there. What time did you all get here? Like four in the morning? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, hello, I'm Eve Pearl. I, I'm a five-time Emmy Award-winning celebrity makeup artist. I get to say that every time. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, thank you. I've uh, worked nine years on The View. Uh, that's really where we won all the Emmys for. And uh, I also do Meredith Vieira on the Today Show and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Um, been fortunate enough to work in this industry for over 18 years. I've been saying 18 years for about four years, so it's probably more. <laughs> but I don't do math, so somewhere around 18 years. And um, this industry is great. I've been doing everything from television. I started on theater, and I got lucky and worked in this industry. Worked with some of these people right here, like Valente, who I'm going to hand over. And uh, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, you guys. Um, my name is Valente Frazier, and I'm a one-time Emmy Award-winning makeup artist. I'm hoping to get to where Eve is one day. But um, yeah, I um, have been in the business for 12 years. and. Um, I'm the personal to Tyra Banks for America's Next Top Model and for uh, what was the Tyra Banks show. Because I think we can all relate to the things that we do. Um, I come from, there's three generations in my family of makeup artists. My mother's a makeup artist, I do this, and my son does it as well. But I went as far away from this business as possible. I used to take companies public on the stock exchange. So I come from a business background, and, but you know, as life throws you weird curves, one day you decide, okay, let me give this silly business a try. And I actually started in theater. So I, I, create fa I create faces and characters. And I still do theater. I still do all the billboards, but most of them that you see for American Ballet Theater at the Met, or if you see those beautiful, that's, I still do that. And we just did a shoot this week for Cinderella. And you could be out of the theatrical world, yet you could still be that star of request. So all those, like all those ballerinas that were just in the, I guess it's not really the core, yeah, the core, now they're the prima ballerinas. And I used to do them 15, 16 years ago, but they still call me to do them. So I'll help create and design the shows, but that's no longer what I do, so I miss that. But that is the most exciting, is when you're creating characters, that is like one of the most exciting things. Now what's exciting for me is helping women see how they can just make themselves look better and feel better about themselves. Every time I do a makeup application, you know, with starting the, my line, the Eve Pearl brand, it was more about, the reason I do this is because I have terrible skin issues myself, and I thought if I could make myself look better and feel better, wow, what can I do for others? So I work with women, you know, I work with men as well because they need it, but I think women really need help because so much, so many of us are getting older and so many are resorting to methods they don't need to because we can, we can help them completely. So I work with women in their 40s and 50s and 60s and make them feel beautiful. And the, be the best compliments I get is when people say, wow, that person you work on, so-and-so, she looks like she has nothing on. She's so easy to do, so natural. And I'm like, okay, thank you. But you know how much work it takes to make the, guy, the men that you work on, the women that you work on, look naturally beautiful. And what's exciting to me is like, I'm actually sitting here. One of the makeup artists that he has no idea that he was an inspiration to me, Jeff, when you came once to The View, uh, you came to The View with Arnold, and you had a tiny little makeup you know, box. It was a wooden makeup box. And when I first started in this business, you know, we always had like huge suitcases, and like, I would see makeup artists that would come with like a huge like, 10 tier makeup case, and I was like, wow, is that what you need to be a great makeup artist? And you know, we would carry everything just in case. And then I was at The View one day, and I saw him walk in with a tiny little case it was this big. And I said, that's what I want to aspire to be. You have to watch those who have made it and who have succeeded. Follow their paths. See what they do. Don't try to grab everything. Go to the best and see what they do. When I wrote my book, I went to Kevin O'Quan's book and I said, what did he do? Oh, I want to do what he did. So there's no reason you can't do what you want to do, but you have to find someone that you admire. And like I, when I saw that, that was my main mission, was to make my suitcase fit into a little box, and I did it. I did it with what I put together, and you don't even realize that, but I, I, didn't even, I was too scared to talk to you. <laughs> but that's what happens. People get scared to talk to people, because, you know, like, and I see now when I'm at, at, the view, um, at The View, the Today Show, I'll see makeup artists come, like you've come many times with Tyra, and I'll see people come, and they kind of look at me, they're scared to talk to me, so I try to make it, my, 
my point to go out, you know, go out of my way to say, hi, I, you know, I'm Pearl, nice to meet you. And they're always like so shocked that I, <laughs> but it's like, we're just regular people. I mean, we just do makeup like you do makeup. So don't be scared of us. I mean, I don't know, maybe they should be scared of you guys. But, they, you know, but I just remember being so scared and I was like, it's so silly. I could have just gone up to him and just say, hi, you know, it's so nice to meet you. But I never, I didn't feel like I was worthy to talk to him. But you've influenced, I mean, this was probably eight or nine years ago, maybe 10 years ago that Arnold did the movie and you were at the end. So you had that little case and because of you, I've made sure that my makeup kit was compact. And that was exciting to me. He would never know but how he's affected my life. And there you go. <laughs> I've still got a ways to go with my makeup kit. <laughs> I've gotten halfway down. Make big mission. <laughs> the most, uh, the most. Like you both said, you never know who's watching you. It doesn't matter what you're doing, whether you're on the set as the powder puff person, as the set person, everybody's watching you. I always advise people, don't be reading a book. I know it sort of takes your time, but if you're reading a book, you can't be watching the monitor. And um, everyone watches, even if you think no one's watching you, somebody's watching you, and someone is saying something about you, and you'd like it to be more positive at all times. Um, I've been doing Meredith now for 13 years. It's basically in her contract that she gets to have wherever she wants, as I'm sure for the people that you work on is in their contract. When you get to a certain level, it becomes in their contract that they choose their own. And then, then you all wonder, well, how can a new person get in? It's not doing the big star, the big talent that gets you in. It's doing that up and coming. You know, so you might not want to be the head or just being a, the fill-in. I mean, I worked on all my children for a few years before I started working on The View. I became the department head, but I didn't do Meredith in the beginning. Actually, I used to do Star, and I used to do Debbie Metnopolis. And then I would do Joy and Star, and then Joy and Lisa. And then Meredith's makeup artist couldn't do her for a while, and then I ended up doing her. And then I got the millionaire gig and I got to working with her because, you know, it's just good to try different people. And the person that was doing then Joy or the person that was doing Elizabeth, for instance, started doing things with them. So the way you get up there is to do that person who maybe not, is not so well known, but that person might become the next big hit. And then you've been their makeup artist and you've been there. Because I think what we all do is more than applied makeup. We are the lighting directors. We are the people that give them the consistency. For me, the person that I work on needs to have a consistent look. She works in news. I'm not there trying to match her eyeshadows to her clothing. That's not what I do. I want to make her look consistently good, so when people look at her, she's reliable. So if I find a look that works, I'm going to stick with that look. I don't need to experiment. I don't have to anything to prove to myself. But she knows that every day, no matter how crazy their worlds are, they know that they're going to come in and they're going to, they can just relax and feel comfortable during that like, tiny little window that they have with us. They know when they go out there that we're looking at the monitors. We're going to go and fight with the lighting director, which is something that we do. <laughs> Not really fight. We just try to you know, nicely, gently nudge them. Can you please put a little lighting here? Could you do this? Could you do that? And sometimes they'll think you're an idiot because you're just a makeup artist. And then you'll have to maybe exert a little bit more of your power and say, um, no, I need you to put that light over there. Right. You know, and that's what the, because the talent can't ever be the bad guy. They trust you to take care of them. So it's more than just being a makeup artist. It's about your whole personality. So I think that's, I want to say almost 50% of our art and our talent and our craft is to be reliable, to be on time, not to be flaky and to take care of your talent and to know their needs. If they don't like to be overpowdered, don't overpowder them. If they don't want to be seen putting makeup on, don't do it. Mm -hmm. If they need it, take care of them as though they, you care. And that's a very important thing that sometimes in this world is lacking. So it's a very big, big industry, but it's a tiny world that we work in. So try to always give 100% whether you're doing it for free because you're interning or you're assisting or whether you're making thousands of dollars, your input should always be 110%. Um, What's going on? And keep your mouth quiet. Just do your job. Do it in a professional level with respect. Be proud of what you do. Whether you're a talent, you know, whether you're the celebrity talent, makeup artist, you also have to remember that they're the celebrity. You are not. And you represent them, as Jeff said earlier. So 
If you act crazy, it reflects upon them. When working at The View, so many things were happening during that time. Everything from somebody having their gastric bypass, that was Pilates, and everything from people doing other craziness, nothing ever left our room. And they knew that. All those things they came out, they came out years afterwards. And that's a very, very important reputation, because your reputation is the most important thing you have. And it does travel. It travels all over the world. It's a tiny little world that we live, that we work in. So you really, when you go to a job, you're not people's best friends. Don't badmouth anybody. Because the same person who's trying to get you to badmouth someone, they're going to do it about you. You're not making any friends that way. And don't be the talent's best friend or buddy. Don't date them. Yes, some people, I mean, you know, it's not the way to get ahead. You know, once again, I could go down a really bad path right now, but just be professional, do your job and leave it. You have to have that cut off because that's business and have a life. And one of the downsides, like one of the, as you said earlier as well, when we are a talent request and you work on a particular talent, you don't have, your life is based around their life. So when they don't work, you don't work. When they have vacation, you have vacation. When they work, you have to work. So a lot of what you do, and it could be 15, 20 years, is based upon somebody else's schedule, which could be crazy. So I have to determine my life based upon somebody else's schedule. In probably 13 years, I've taken 10 days that were different from the days that were somebody else's days off. And that's a lot. You know, because every time one of those days was taken off, it was like a big tragedy. So you have to be aware there is that side too. And you have to be happy about it. Sure, you know, <laughs> you know. Um, it's great to be needed. It's great to be wanted. But there's also a side of, wow, you know, you kind of, in a way, have given yourself to the situation. I'm not complaining about it, I love what I do. But these are all things you have to be aware of, of what you're, you know, what you're dreaming of. And again, it will just happen, but most important, do your job, be professional, and uh, don't talk too much. <laughs> At this point, I could just say ditto. I mean, to all that. I mean, it's all, you know, everything that they expressed is absolutely 100% true. Um, the, the best advice that I ever got, which is all in line with this, which is... You work with hair, and you really, it's a team, it's a machine. And it gets to be a really well-oiled machine. When I do, for instance, makeup in the morning, I have 15 minutes. That's it. 15, I have a 15-minute window, and I work with the hair, like with the hair person, to get full hair and makeup done, including lashes, in 15 minutes on a moving target. Okay. And the main goal is not to kill them or poke them in the eye or like do something crazy, which you know, knock wood. Once I poked Barbara because she was moving too much with it. She didn't move again. <laughs> Um, you really have to approach things delicately uh, when you're first dealing with them, um, with lighting and the monitor. You also have to know where to look. It's a, ve a very important room called the control room that you need to get familiar with, especially in the beginning of any show or any scene or any, like a movie. The first time I ever worked in a movie actually was with Leonard Engelman. You know, I was fortunate. I got to work with really cool people. He was the first person who was the first head department head that I worked on a movie in the first Theatrical life, major thing I did was with Al Pacino. I mean, how cool is that? After working with these people, nobody frightened me because I was like, oh, I got to work with these people, so you know, I can handle anybody. But they're the ones that like, you know, would show you, okay, Leonard was very, very meticulous. So I got to watch what he does. Watching is so important. When you're working around the big pros, watch what they do. You know, if they're, unless they're acting crazy, then don't do that. But, you know, it should be kind of clear. And when you're dealing with the lighting, Go to the control room because every monitor is different. You might be in one monitor, everything is blue, and one monitor, everything is orange. So that's not a true state of what goes on. You have to go to the control room, look at the control room, look at what's going on, and remember the time that you once did a good a shot that the person looked really good at. Look at the lighting, where they look amazing, the most amazing, because you know your makeup really didn't change that much. Go to the most amazing thing and see where the lighting was. See what's the important lighting. You have to become a lighting di director, seriously and know what lighting works, and you have to gently say, you don't say, I need you to put a light there. No. So do you think, 
do you think it'd be, you know, do you have any more lights, you know, around? Do you think it might be okay for you to put a light, like maybe right underneath, get rid of some of the shadows? Usually, hopefully, they'll be smart enough to understand what you're saying. You know, and if they're not, because sometimes they're not that smart, and then they'll be like, hmm, you know, go back and say, no, you, you think it really, you know, she's a little dark, she's got a little shadow here. Keep doing it every once in a while. And if you see they're not paying attention, then you go to the talent and tell them that. Or you go to the director and tell them that. But you do not give up. Because at the end of the day, when that thing airs, no one's going to remember that the lighting designer was a jerk. They're going to remember, why didn't you make me look good? So those are very important. That's your reputation, you have to remind them. And the talent will back you. If you say, excuse me, can you help me? I'm trying to get them to put a light in front of you because you've got a shadow on their face. They don't want to look bad. And when you go to the talent and they tell them, put a light in front of me, please, they'll never not listen to you again. It only takes one time, and they'll realize. But just be smooth about it. Try not to be like, you know, a bitchy diva, because there's too many of them out there. So you want to be the night. You want to be strong. Remember, we can all be, we could all be, every single person here has a streak that could be crazy, I'm sure. I don't know you all very well, but I'm sure nobody reaches this point in their business career by being a pushover. We're where we're at because we know how to fight when need to, but we don't want to. We'll be as nice and as pleasant as can be, but do not push certain people the wrong way because we do have a turning point and we try not to go there ever. So just remember that and re help teach others that too. <laughs> Did I speak for everybody? Uh, yeah, I think you said it in a nutshell, I mean, for me, you know, it's definitely a, a team effort. And